Good evening, and I hope you're doing really well this evening. Welcome from Canton, Georgia. Here it is, uh, April 25th, 2020. And I'm sure you are all uh, enjoying your time at home, as I am. So tonight's video is about workflow. Whether you're using Studio One or Cakewalk or any other DAW, understanding your own workflow is super important. And so I want to go over just a couple of quick setup things that I do for all of my projects in both Cakewalk and Studio One, but this applies to any other DAW you might be using as well. So you can see here on my screen right now, I have Cakewalk up. And then over here, I also have Sonar. And in both cases, I'm kind of at the start page. So on the start page, you can see I have Scratchpad 2020 for, uh, for Cakewalk, and I'm going to go ahead and open that. And you'll see the same thing happening over here on Studio One, where if I say create a new song, I'm going to choose uh, Studio One Scratchpad. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And in both cases, I get something <clears throat> very similar. So in Studio One, you can see here on the, um, on the left-hand side, I've got my tracks grouped into folders. So I've got my vocals, my drums and percussion, and guitars and bass and keyboards. And in each, I've got them broken down in the individual channels, all color coded. Vocals, drums, guitar and bass. Go over here to Cakewalk and we see the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this console out of here. So you can see that we have the same thing over here. We've got the vocals grouped green, drums, guitar and bass, and some keyboards at the bottom. Both of these sets are the same so that when I start a new project in either Cakewalk or Studio One, I always have the same set of tracks. I know I'm going to have these, at least if not all of them, most of them. Uh, I might go in and say, hey, look, I'm going to get rid of the rhythm one or rhythm two, or in the case of um, Studio One, I've got it. Acoustic One, Acoustic Two, Rhythm One, Rhythm Two. I may or may not have acoustic guitar, so maybe I'll get rid of those tracks. But I'd rather have them ready to go in every single case. I'm also likely going to add some more tracks. So I might, you know, take this bass, uh, this uh, backup track here, and I might duplicate it. Add some more backup vocals, that kind of a thing. Same thing in Kickwalk. So whichever the case might be, I'm always gonna have some basic tracks that I know I can count on being there and I don't have to set them up every time. If every time I had to go in and say, I wanna add a new track and what kind of track is it gonna be and where's it gonna come from and all that, that's a hassle in the creative process. Instead, I've already got my lead vocal. I know every single time that it's gonna be coming from the uh, correct place, that it's going to be going out to the correct place same thing in Studio One. Now you may see some examples here um, where they don't look right because maybe I haven't used uh, Cakewalk for a while. Um, but like in Studio One, as an example, you can see that I've got my input coming from the mic. And if we go over to the, uh, the console, you would see um, that in those views, we have the, the, the same sort of thing happening. So we, I always know what I'm gonna have in these cases. Now these screens might be a little bit off uh, in this case, which is a little ironic because of you know the fact that this is a workflow video, um, but I'm actually resizing all of this stuff because I've got a 4K screen up here. Uh, so part of that is the fact that I'm kind of shrinking all this stuff down so it's a normal screen size and not super tiny. But you can see kind of that same thing here. Here we are in Studio One. I've got my console up. You can see all of my uh, buses and everything my mains, same deal over here in Cakewalk. Everything looks graphically a little bit different, but effectively the same thing, right? So we've got our, you know, our vocals and our all of the, the different parts and pieces and the buses and the mains and all of that. It's all set up and it's all consistent and it's always there in my default project. Same thing goes here for um, the Fader Port 8. Right, so this piece is something that I use in both Cakewalk and in Studio One. Its transport sections work similarly. Its volume sections work similarly. 
mutant solos and all of those kind of all the general stuff you would expect out of a basic mixer all works the same between the two and in studio one there's a little bit more depth in some of these features but in cakewalk a lot of these features work on the fader port 8 same thing over here on the console one and again if you look here at my uh, cakewalk session you can see i have the console one in every track and if I select a track, you know, say for example, I'm here on the uh, Tom's track and I turn on my console one, you can see there I am on the Tom's track. It works the same way in Studio One. Anytime I select a track, that's where I am. And I can uh, go to those different, different tracks within uh, Cakewalk, like on the lead vocal here, and hit the on button on my console one, and I go over to the lead vocal same thing in Studio One. That workflow is the same. So I've spent a little bit of time going through this workflow process of making sure that I have everything set the way that I want it to be so that it'll work how I want it to when I go to actually make a new song. And this is a huge, um, it's just a huge benefit in trying to get new songs created because you're not stuck in the technical and instead are allowed to go ahead and do your creative because you know your basic stuff is already going to be there. Your more complicated stuff, sure, you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to add some things and subtract some things or whatever, but your basics are always going to be there. That's what this video was about, and I hope that you will take the time to create uh, some basic project stuff, even going into some depth, right? You know, for example, on on my V drums, for example, I've got my, my uh, drums are all set up so that I've got um, I've got my my drum maps all configured so you can see as an example of that my drums are all configured here kick all the way up through the ride for everything on my mimic now it took a long time for me to go ahead and set that stuff up and make sure that I had it just right the way I wanted it this is a little bit of setup on the upfront side of things, but once you have it, it makes it a whole lot easier and a whole lot more fun to use your DAW. So I hope you'll take this advice and create yourself some kind of a, an upfront workflow to make sure that you have all of the things that you want in place when you go to use your DAW. I hope this video has been useful. If you like it, please you know, indicate that here on the, on the channel, make a reaction or a comment on the blog, Please share this video with other people. I'd appreciate that as well. That's all I've got for this evening. I hope you're well.